Hi guys, I am Bearded Dev. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a new video on common table expressions. If you do like the video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Today we are going to be looking at what is a CTE, common table expression, how we can write a CTE in SQL Server Management Studio and what the benefits of CTEs actually are. So first of all, what is a common table expression? It is a temporary result set used within a query. And CTEs can be used within other objects, uh, functions, store procedures, triggers, and views. Let's jump over to SQL Server Management Studio and go through some examples. Now I am going to be covering a lot on CTEs, guys, so this video will probably be divided into two. Um, so let's have a look at this table we've got in our database, our payroll year to dates table. Um, so initially I'm just going to run a query um, just to show you the results. So we'll just run a select all from that table initially. So this table stores our employee IDs, the pay year, the pay week, the hours they've worked and the rate they've been paid. This is a table we're going to be working with uh, a lot on the CTE videos. First of all, I'm just going to go through the syntax of a CTE. Now, a CTE always starts with the words with. So if we just write with, and then we need to give our common table expression a name. The most common name I come across, it's very imaginative, is CTE. So, for example, we're just going to call this CTE. And then underneath there, we're going to have the as word. So we go with the CTE's name as, and then we open brackets. Inside those brackets goes our query. So I'll just comment that for now. And then once that's done, we have our select underneath. So let's, let's put this pra into practice. The first thing we want to do uh, with this table is we want to find out which workers are paid above average. So to do that, the first thing we need to know is the average rate that employees are paid. Then we need to work out which employees are paid higher than that average rate. So to quickly calculate the average rate of employees per week, we can just write a simple uh, statement to select, select average rate from our payroll year to date's table. So if I run that query now, uh, we'll get a figure. It's to six decimal places there, but that, that's fine. We can continue working with that. If we did want to shorten that, we could cast it as a decimal um, and just set, the, um, just set it to two decimal places. What we're going to do here is use a CTE to accomplish this task. Uh, so remember, the task is we want to find out all the employees that are paid higher than average. So let's go back to our CTE statement. So we are going to leave it as just, um, in fact, we'll change the name of the CTE to average, if I can spell, average pay. And then our query for this is going to be uh, select average rate, uh, and we'll give that column a name because we are, it is an aggregate statement, so we'll lose that that name, we'll just call it A underscore rate to stand for average rate. And um, that's going to be from our payroll dot year to dates table. So that's our query within the CTE. Uh, in this case, the name is average pay. Now I could just write uh, a select underneath just to say select all from average pay because we that is our temporary result set name. Now I've left that select at the top of the page as well. Um, I'm just going to execute this query. We can see there we've got an incorrect syntax. But because we're using a CTE, if we have a statement above that within a query window, we do need to terminate that statement with the semicolon. And we can see here we've got that error on screen. If you're intending to write a common table expression, you need to explicitly terminate the previous statement. So I could either comment that out or just add a semicolon on the end. And we can see there IntelliSense has picked that up and changed that now. I've just noticed I've spelled average pay incorrectly. Uh, we will comment that out for now because we, we don't need it. Um, so if I execute this query now, we can see our, our rate is returned. So the CTE has got our temporary result set. 
and then we're selecting from that temporary result set. In this case we're not doing anything with it, we're just selecting all the results. Now with a CTE as well, what's worth mentioning is different to a temporary table, it doesn't actually hold any data in there itself, it's just a temporary result set, but it must be executed as part of the query. So if I was just to run this select here, it wouldn't understand what that name was, as we can see there, there's no object called average pay. But if I highlight the CTE and the select underneath it, execute that as one query, we get the results returned. Now from this, we want to calculate all employees who are paid higher than the average rate. So we're going to change our select and we're going to look back at the payroll year to date table. And we're going to say where rate is greater than, uh, we'll do greater than or equal to in this case. I don't think anybody is paid 7.65 an hour. And we'll say, we'll put this into a subquery first of all. So uh, greater than select a rate from CTE. We didn't call it CTE, so that's why we need to change the name there. So our CTE is actually called average pay. So if we execute that query now, we can see we've got all this data returned. We didn't really want all columns, so I'll just change this to MPID. That's all we need to know. Uh, and because it's weekly pay, the employees get a row in here per week. Um, so we don't want sort of 20 copies of each employee ID, we just want a distinct employee ID. And we can see there we've got three employees who are paid higher than the average rate. Now a benefit of a CTE as well is I can also execute this query. So I can just highlight that query and execute it within the CTE. So what the CTE does, one of the major advantages is improves readability. But if you need to work on one table, particularly aggregating data, it's very beneficial to use a CTE. It provides great user, uh, readability and the fact that you can also execute that query independently is also a major benefit. So we've now completed our task to calculate all the employees who are paid higher than the average rate. We're going to move on to our next task now looking at CTEs and um, what we want to do is calculate the number of weeks each employee has worked. So if I just run this select again to introduce this table, uh, we can see here we've got the employee ID, the pay year, the pay week, the hours and the rate. We want to get a total in this table as well. Um, so we're going to change, in fact what we'll do, we'll open a new query window. Um, so we're going to do a new CTE and um, we'll call this number weeks as open brackets. We write our statement in here which is going to be our temporary result set. So we're going to say um, select, we're going to return the, em the employee ID in this case and then we're going to do a count on pay week. So we want to know the amount of weeks we've paid an employee as uh, we'll call this weeks worked and that's going to be from payroll uh, payroll schema and a year to date table uh, so we'll close brackets and then if we run select all from number of weeks one thing we haven't added there is a group by so I'll just add that in we're just going to group by employee ID uh, to get the results set as intended so we can see here we've got five employees, most of them have worked 16 weeks, employee ID has worked, uh, employee ID 3 has worked 28, and we will notice a problem with that later. So now what I can do is I can take this CTE called number weeks, and I can join that back to our payroll year to date, well our year to date table that's part of the payroll schema. Now we both both of these tables, well our temporary result set for the CTE has got MPID and our payroll year to date has got MPID. So we need to add aliases into these. So I'm just going to call the CTE number weeks A for now uh, and our table B. 
I'm going to say on a m pi d equals b m pi d. And if I run that query now, we can see we've got the extra column weeks worked. We've got m pi d in here twice, which we don't really need. We could take that out rather than doing a select all, but this is just an example. So now we've got the weeks worked for each employee and all the data in the table as well. Um, so if we scroll down to three, we can see that worker had 28 weeks worked. So we've gone through two quick examples there of how we can use the CTEs as subquery in the select underneath, or we could actually join to that CTE. So if you need to do sort of two operations on a table, uh, so we've done aggregate and the count of pay, um, and then we can use a CTE for that purpose. Uh, another one I'm going to write, I'll just write it underneath. Uh, remember, we need to terminate this statement with a semicolon. Uh, what we'll do is we'll find out the worker's total pay. Um, so we'll call this CTE total pay. And we'll put in a, in a query, which will be um, MPID. And what we want is hours multiplied by rate from year to date table. So what we got there is our MPID and then hours multiplied by rate. Now we did say we're going to return the total pay, but this is only going to return this is only going to return the week's pay. So I'm going to actually change this. We're going to move on to total pay in the second part. So I'm just going to change this to weekly pay. Uh, and I'll just give this column a name. Week pay. And then if we select all from weekly pay initially. And if we highlight all of that and run that, we can see their pay each week. We will again join back to our year to date table. Again on the same, using our employee ID as a join. And if I highlight all of that now and run that, we can see we get our hours, we get our rate, we get the pay year, the pay week, and the totals for that week as well. We're going to be moving on now, guys, to our next task. Uh, we've been given a bug. We've found a problem with the system. And in our table, I'll show you the example. Um, so I'll just open up a new query window. We found a problem in our year to date table. So I'm just going to have a look at um, our MPID 3, and then we're going to move on to CTEs as well. Uh, I'm just going to order these results uh, by pay year and pay week. And we can see we've got some duplicates here for weeks 13 onwards this employee has got multiple rows within this table which is a problem we've got a bug somewhere in the system and it's inserting duplicates we need to correct this data now one thing i commonly use cte's for is to help me remove duplicates from a system and we're going to go through an example now of how we can do that so I'm going to call this CTE duplicates, again with our CTE name as we open brackets to write our inner query and we're going to write uh, MPID pay year pay week hours rate from our year to date table. So with this table as well, we've got the ID column. Um, so one of the options could be that we delete, we manually delete based on that ID column. Um, but I'm gonna use a CTE to do this. The problem when you manually delete using an ID, this could be a production database. So it's live, data could still be adding to this table. 
and usually when I would write a script I would have to commit that and then an impl uh, someone from the implementations team would run that script against the system. That's not in all in all companies, um, but I'm just using this as an example that data could change in the process of running this script. So if we were using IDs, there could be new IDs being added that won't be included as part of our script. So with this table, we need to group by every column. I'm just going to copy these as a quick shortcut, good old copy and paste. And then what we're also going to return is the minimum ID, and we're just going to call that M underscore ID. And then we close our brackets, and we've got our CTE now. Now if I run a query to find out the count of all rows, um, so I'll just use the bottom right hand corner, 92 rows, and then if I just select from our duplicate CTE. Let's see how much of a difference that makes. Okay, so down the bottom right hand side we've now got 80 rows. So we know we've got duplicates in there that we want to remove. So we're going to use this CTE to help us remove those duplicates. What we're going to do is write our script delete from our year to date table where id not in select mid from cte again it's not called cte it's just a habit of calling cte ctes uh, so i'll change that to duplicates you can see there we've got a red squiggly line indicating we've got an error with our syntax so now We've got our CTE that will calculate the minimum ID, grouping by pretty much every column in the table. And then we're going to delete from our underlying table, which is payroll.year-to-dates, where our ID is not part of our CTE. So if I execute that query now, what was the difference? Was it 12 rows? So we're expecting to see 12 rows have been deleted. 12 rows affected. Let's run this query again that looks correct to me let's run a select just from the whole table let's check our count 80 rows and let's run this inner query again let's see if we get a match yes 80 rows so that's one way we can use a CTE to remove duplicate data obviously there are other ways we could have gone about this but I just wanted to go through the CTE example uh, it's a quick way and I find it quite readable to use the CTE to remove data from the system. I think that's going to be an end to part one. Stay tuned for part two. We're going to be creating a stored procedure. We're going to be looking at nested CTEs. We've got a task which is to calculate a bonus for our workers. So very exciting stuff. Every worker wants a bonus. We all want bonuses. And we're going to be looking at that in part two. So I'm just going to quickly go over just noticed an error there with uh, my typing, I'd called it the benefits of stored CTEs, that was incorrect. So the benefits of CTEs, we can improve readability, so as we can see we can run the inner query, we can look at those results, it really helps us when we're looking at, at, at complex queries. Uh, we can run the internal query separately, we can nest CTEs, like I say we're going to be looking at that in part 2 and CTEs can also be used recursively. That is going to be outside the scope of this video. We're going to do a whole another video on how we can look at um, recursive CTEs. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, please don't forget to subscribe. Click the notification button to be kept up to date with when I launch new videos. I will be up to uploading videos regularly and if you've got any questions that you'd like to send to me either put them in the comments box below or you can email me directly at asbeardeddev at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.